Hi hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be installing PFSense Firewall. PFSense is a really good open source, uh, free for personal use firewall. I, I really like the PFSense Firewall. So let's just jump over to the web view. Link will be in the description. It's just pfsense.org. So to download it, we just head over here to the download section and we select AMD64 and then we're going to select CD image. And then you click the download. I've already got it downloaded to my desktop. So once you get it downloaded, you have a .iso.gz. So in order to get your ISO file, you would hit extract. Now to install this ISO file to a USB drive so you can boot off of it, I created a video um, copying a Ubuntu uh, ISO over to a USB drive. Even though it's PFSense, it should also work. I'll put a link in the description. So if you need help with that, check out the description. So now that we extracted it here, we have our .iso. So that's how you get your ISO out of that .gz. So now we're going to install this, so give me a minute. Okay, now it's booting up. Let's give it a minute to do the thing. Let me see if I can get that a little bit bigger for you. Yeah, it should only take a minute. Okay, so now we're booted into the installer. We're going to accept their terms. It's free to use as long as you're not using it for commercial use. For like home use, it's completely open source for you. So now we got it where it's uh, selected to install. So let's just hit OK. And we're going to continue. Just hit select. And we are going to just leave it as is to automatically partition disk and then it's going to copy the files over. So let's just give this a minute to do its thing. And we're not going to do any manual configurations as of right now, so we just hit no. And we would hit reboot. So give this a minute to reboot. Okay, now it's rebooting. Let's just give it a minute to reboot. Now when you're installing this on a computer, you want to make sure it has two NIC ports or Ethernet ports. You can pick up a PCIe card pretty cheap on eBay like Intel makes some good ones they're like 20 25 bucks on eBay varies from what you get definitely recommend getting at least the, the gigabit port if you do get one so now we're going it already kind of determined what we would want our land and WAN port so now we're just going to change the IP on this I'm going to leave this as 192.168 dot one dot one so to if you need to change which port does what it shows you the MAC address but it already selected the right ones for me so what you do is hit no and then you would either enter the EM0 these might be bit different for your installation sometimes it gives them different names for which port is going to be your LAN and which one's going to be your internet port and my encoder overloaded, which I'm not going to change these because it selected the right one for me. So to change the IP on the WAN port, normally this is done by your ISP, which sometimes it violates terms if you change your IP without paying for a static IP, but this is on my local network, so I'm free to do whatever I want. So we're going to select option two. So if you see, I just hit two, and then we're gonna go one, and it asks, do you want to set up by DNS? No. I mean, not DNS, DHCP. So we'd enter a new IP. So we're going to enter 10.100.24. Uh, dot dot which might be different on your network. And I have a subnet of 8. Our primary gateway is, for me, would be 0. Dot yeah, man, I can't type that one. And I don't want to set up 
DHCP6 right now. Oh, wait. I ain't gonna set that up. And yes, we want to use the web interface for configuring it for now on. So we just give this a minute to do its thing. And then we hit enter for continue, and you see we now have a new IP address. So because I'm installing this on my local network, I need to assign my computer over to this uh, firewall so I can access the web interface. So give me a minute to get set up with that. And we're going to go into network, and we're going to hit options. So now we're going to DIPv4, and we're going to go to manual. I'm going to hit add, and I'm going to do 192.168.1.10. I'm going to leave that at 24. And we're going to set the gateway, which would be the firewall, would be 192.168.1.1. And I have these are my local DNS servers. I'm, you don't have to, you can leave that blank if you want. But I'm just going to put my one in there. And we'll hit save. Okay, so now we need to restart our network settings so it gets a new IP address. And now remember, you don't have to do this if you're on this network, but I'm trying, I have two networks on the same network, so I gotta assign over to this one. So you see, we now got this new IP address. So let's just switch over the web view. And we would go to 192.168.1.1. And I think the login is admin, and the password is pfsense, I believe. So let's see. Yep, that was it. I'm not going to save that. So we just hit next. We're going to go through the configuration steps. You hit next. You can set your host name. I'm just going to leave it as default. We're going to set my local DNS server, which you can set .8.8.8 .8 for Google's DNS server, whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to leave my time settings as default. So here's just some random settings if you want to set. There's your, you can change your IP to your uh, internet port, which we're just going to leave those default. And we're going to hit continue. This is your LAN network. You can set more IPs. I run a 10.10. I mean 10.0.0.1 on a subnet of 8, which I'm just going to leave this as default. And we're going to change the passphrase. Make sure you set this to something secure. Just set something generic because it ain't too important here. And we're going to reload. And my encoder overloaded again. And then we hit finish. Give this a minute to reload. Yeah, it's just accept the terms again. Okay, we now have PFSense installed. Check back for more tutorials. If you need any help, leave a comment. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Every subscribe counts. See you guys later.